Hello everyone and welcome to week seven of my Christmas Tag Tuesday series. I can't believe that next week is going to be the last one of these series. So next week I'm going to do some fairly quick and simple last minute type tags. This week I've decided to use a variety of thin cuts to make a buildable type tag. So you can see in front of me I've got the Christmas Story card making stamp set and thin cuts. I absolutely love this wreath. I've got some wood pattern paper and I actually have two tags to show you so there's a little bit of a variation not much but it's a colorway variation to get different looks with color tones I've got the buildable tags that were from the previous core catalog but these are still available and for me I think these are a staple of anything cut set especially if you love making tags they're not just for gifts they are so versatile you can use them on your scrapbooking layouts and card projects as well and I'll put the link to everything that I've got in front of me here below because I don't know how long these are going to be available for. The all-purpose tags are in our current cook catalogue. There's actually quite a lot of tags. I've cut the magnet sheet in half just purely for my fridge bin storage. I find it easier to store them this way. I'm going to use a tag from that. I've got some inks and I've got some wood grain pattern paper. Now I have a stack of wood grain paper. What I do with my paper packs once I've finished using a collection is I take them out of the collection and then I store them and they become a bit too precious to cut up but I have an ever-growing pile so I'm not quite sure where this one's from but I really wanted to use it for today's tags so let's get started with this I'm going to just put this aside because the first thing I want to do is the stamping so I've got this wreath mounted on a large block and I'm going to use pine ink to stamp it and I'm going to be doing some treatments to this wreath and I need to get those done fairly early because we need that to dry so I'm just gonna stamp this. And you need to make sure when you're using a large block that you're applying pressure evenly around the block to get good coverage. And as you can see, this stamps absolutely beautifully. And the next thing I'm going to do is cut this out. As you can see from all the highlighted blue elements here, these pieces all come with thin cuts, which are wonderful. I don't mind fussy cutting, but if I can get a stamp set with thin cuts, I prefer to do that. Another reason why I love this wreath is it is so easy to line everything up because the design is repetitive. So all you need to do is just make sure that you've got all those little outlying pieces of the wreath all lined up and then you can run that through your die cutting machine. So I've actually got two of these here because I want to do two different colorway treatments to this. I'm gonna bring in some scrap paper. And as you saw from this wood pattern paper, it has a gray tone and the other wood paper I've got has a warmer brown tone. So I'm gonna do two different treatments to make these wreaths match the paper that's going underneath. So for the gray tone paper, I'm using mink ink. And I'm just going to bring in my blending brush and I'm coming off the edge of my paper here because I want a light blend. I don't want to have any pounce marks or circles on this. So coming off the edge always works better. And then I'm just turning this around as I go doing the outside edges. I just found when I was playing around with what I was going to use for this that the white card stock was just a little bit too stark up against the wood grain, but I didn't want to stamp these onto a gray. I still wanted some highlights from the white cardstock coming through. So I've gone around the outside and now I'm going into the middle. And then I'm going to do exactly the same thing with my second wreath. But instead of using the mink, I'm going to use almond ink. And you can see this comes in a bit heavier. You could use shortbread if you've got shortbread ink. Almond is a retired color, but I really love almond. And it's that in between shortbread and toffee. Sometimes it's just the right tone that I want. And it's a bit browner than shortbread. Shortbread does have a yellow hue to it. And I'm doing exactly the same thing here, coming in from the center, and then I'm just lightly going around with my pieces. I can always add more ink, but I'm going to leave that for now until I've got the rest of my tag made. The next thing that I'm going to do with these is come in with some carnation red liquid pearls. And I'm going to go over top of where the circles are. So the first thing I need to do when I open this up is make sure that it's all flowing. So I just wanna make sure that I've got 
little dots ready to go. And this is why I'm starting with this part here first, because this needs to dry. So I'm not going over the top where the stars are. I'm just going where the little dots are. And Liquid Pearls flattens out quite nicely. And I don't need to squeeze very much because really all I'm doing is covering up that pine color where the circles are. And then I'm gonna repeat the process with this one as well. So I'm gonna be quite careful because I have smudged a couple of these when I was doing prep work. But if you do do a smudge, don't worry, if it's just in one area, you'll still be able to use these for the tags. The next thing I'm going to do is a bit of die cutting. And what I want to do is line this piece up so that it cuts these little panels out, but it also gives a stitched edge as well. Anything with a stitched edge edge on a die to me is worth its weight in gold. I really, really love the stitched edges. So I'm going to line this one up and run this through my die cutting machine. So here's my top layer. And then I need to do a bottom layer as well because I want the wood to show through from behind in the panel. But before I take this apart, I'm actually going to cut four more of these from a colored cardstock. Now I know you might be looking at that and thinking it doesn't match, but it doesn't really matter. This is an old retired color and our pattern cardstock has a white core. So basically I wanna use this like foam tape to build it up. So I'm going to cut four of these. So there's my four pieces. And then I need to cut the base piece of this one so I can take this part. Using a wider washi tape or the low tack tape works really well to hold these pieces in place so that each one of these is going to be exactly the right size to sit on top of each other. And now I'm going to cut the base panel of my tag from that same color tone of wood grain. And I've also gone ahead and cut a white background as well because this is going to be the back of my tag and I want to be able to stamp on the back of it. So that's all the pieces for this part of the tag. I just need to go ahead and adhere all of these together. And you'll see how easy this is to put all of these together and make them into a chipboard style piece. If any of the glue does ooze out, you can just quickly wipe that away, but it does dry clear. I don't need a lot of glue. You can see this white glue will come out quite thinly. And really, I only need to put a little bit of glue on each section. I don't need to do the entire piece of these more narrow pieces. And now I can put my wood piece on top. And that makes that quite stable. So there's four layers of cardstock and one layer of pattern paper. So now what I need to do is just adhere this directly to my base panel. So that's this piece here. Now I'm going to make sure that I've got the right color tone. So this goes back to back. And I'm going to put my block on top of that to hold that down. And then I've got my white tag here. And what I've done is gone ahead and stamped it with the Just For You stamp set. This is the From Me To You special that is on at the moment. It might be a bit late to order that now and get it in time for Christmas because when this goes to air, it will be the 13th of December. And I know shipping is crazy this time of year, but I think this set is well worth getting to have in your stash. It doesn't have to just be for Christmas it can be for any time of year and now I'm going to attach this to the back of the tag so we've basically got four layers of cardstock with the color and you can't see that that is a totally different color I was mindful that I didn't pick a really bright color like a yellow or anything like that to put in the layers I'm hoping by me angling this you can see that it's all the layers there but the color doesn't actually show through and when I was doing the die cutting I did die cut the little tab that goes with that that's this piece here 
So now I'm going to attach that to the top and that will finish off the back of the tag. But I think it's quite nice having this pattern on the back of here. So there's the base of my tag. I love how the panel looks. Now to add to my layers of this tag, I'm gonna bring in some mocha glitter paper and some gold glitter paper and I'm going to die cut a star. This is the small stitch star. And this little rectangle tag is from the all purpose tags. So I'm going to die cut these two pieces out. And while I was die cutting them, I wasn't sure whether I was going to go with a circle or a rectangle behind the star. But I think the circle is going to get a little bit lost with the star. It covers it up quite a bit. I quite like how the rectangle little tag works for that. And then the other layer for this is going to be this wreath that I've got here. So this is the one that I did and I allowed the liquid pearls to dry and they flatten out when they're drying. They don't leave peaks quite so much as stickles glue does and you can see I did smudge it while I was moving it but I am going to be able to hide that by the time I layer all these pieces up together. I'll just bring in one of the wreaths that I've stamped and I haven't done any inking on to show you what it looks like with just the white background and no inking at all and these elements and it stands out really nicely but I really like the look of having the wreath inked a little bit to match the tag. I need to punch some holes in my star and in my wreath so I'm purposefully going to punch my hole up here where I smooshed that bit of liquid pearls and I need to put a hole into this star as well because everything is going to hang from the twine. And I'm going to do a special little treatment to the twine. I'm not just going to tie it this time. It's going to have another effect on it as well. But before I get all this done, I've got some more splattering and inking to do. Now there is drying time involved with this because I'm going to do all the ink splattering onto all of these pieces. So I've got my splatter box here. I use this to put up behind my splatter box to try and protect my area a little bit more. And I'm just laying out all the pieces that I want to do the splattering on. And I'm going to be using some different things for splattering this time. I decided to purchase some Winsor & Newton white ink. I watch Vicky Papiano on YouTube and she does a lot of art journaling type pages. And she uses this ink to do her splatters. And I wanted to have a play with it just to see what it was like. And I love how it looks. And I've got a very small tip paintbrush here that I just dip in and tap. It does dry fairly quickly, but not quite quickly on the glitter paper. You do need to allow drying time for that. And I'm going over all of these pieces because I want them all to be covered with some white splatters. And it doesn't matter if some of it goes over the top of these little liquid pearls that I've done. I just want to make sure that I get quite a lot of splatters on all of these elements. And I'm not gonna stop at just the white. I want to add some gold splatters as well. I'm bringing in my Zurataki Starry Colors. I love this color palette. And I've got a fan brush here. So I can blame Julie Carrier for this because I used to just use a normal brush with this, but the fan brushes just splatter beautifully and I get a lot more coverage with those. You don't need terribly much water to activate this, just enough for the project on hand. And now I need to leave these all aside to dry as well before I start building and putting everything together. So these are all dry now. I did cheat a little bit. I did use my heat gun, but I think you can see the splatters on the glitter paper look really, really cool. I really, really love how this has come out and all of the different colors with the mocha underneath that you get from the white splatters and the gold. And this is going to be layered like this on the tag, but there will be enough for it to swing so you can see more of it. Before I get into assembly though, I want to distress this a little bit. So I'm going to bring this in and my mink ink, because I'm going to start with mink. If I feel like I need to go any darker, I can always bring in a darker gray. So I'm just coming in from the edge. I'm not worrying about the fact that this is built up and the ink might get inside this area here at all but I just want a light distressing around the edges of these. And once again, I'm starting off the edge and bringing it from the paper, from my, from my white paper here, 
onto the tag. I'm just going all the way around the tag. I'm not coming all the way in. I don't want it to be dark all the way on the inside as well. I just want these outside edges to have some ink. And then I'm going to do exactly the same thing on the back side of the tag as well. So I've come in a little bit more on the white on the corner pieces, just to soften those edges just a little bit so it's not all too harsh. So now it's time to put everything together and I'm going to change it up a bit with the twine. I'm gonna bring in my crochet hook after I've put everything together. So you can see I've got a rather a large piece of twine here. I'm going to halve that and I'm going to bring in a needle that's got a fairly large eyelet here, but it's also got a blunt end. And I'm going to thread this through while it's doubled over and pick up all my pieces. So I'm going through the star, the little rectangle, the hole that I punched in my wreath and at the top of the tag. Now I didn't put a little tag topper on the front one because it's all going to be hidden. And then I'm just gently pulling that through because it is a bit wider. And then I can pull my needle off the edge because I haven't threaded it so that it's through like this. And then I can string this together and just pull this down a little bit because I'm going to, because I'm just gonna feed this through. And you'll see what I'm gonna do with these long pieces now. I'm gonna bring in my crochet hook. Now crocheting is something that I learned how to do very young. My mother taught me how to knit and to crochet and to sew. And I still have all those skills, which is wonderful. And they're all coming together in the craft room. I haven't tried stitching yet. Chelsea Varasmati is very good at stitching onto projects, but that's something that I'm going to have to learn how to do. So you can see, I'll start this again so you can see what I'm doing because I was too busy chatting. With the loop that I've got here from where I pulled this through, I'm gonna go through with my crochet hook and I'm gonna do a single chain. Now there's lots of YouTube videos that show you how to crochet. I just need to get this one out of the way so that I can go up. So basically when you have the loop, you just go around your crochet hook like this and pull it through. And I'm going to make a chain going up and this is why I have kept this piece of twine quite long because I want this to form part of the tag. Now this twine has gold thread through it as well as the burlap type twine. So I just need to make sure that I get both pieces through so that I don't have the pieces of gold hanging out over the edge. So when I think I've got to a long enough piece and I quite love how that looks. I think it just adds something a little bit different to the top of the tag. So when I've done that one, I'm just gonna make a big loop, making sure I don't go all the way through to the edge. And then I'm going to do exactly the same thing with the other strand. So how I do this is I put the strand between my smallest and my ring finger and then I go, I can't do it now, I'm trying to tell you. Let me just pull this aside. I go through here and around, and then I have it wrapped around my finger like this. And then I can just keep pulling these pieces through. So it's around the hook, through the loop, around the hook, through the loop. And I'm gonna go all the way up here until I get it to the same height as the one I did for the other piece. So now I'm just checking that I've got these at about the same height. I'm gonna get my crochet hook through this loop here and this loop here. I'm gonna pull those together. And now that I've got both of these loops here, I'm going to pull both the twine pieces through at the same time to finish it off. So it's easier just to go through one loop at a time because this is quite a lot larger with the two pieces. And then I'm going to do another one and I'm going through both loops at the same time and I'm just doing a bit of a wriggle here. And then I can just pull this because that will effectively knot the top. And there I have my tag all done with a fancy little crochet hook topper to it. And these pieces 
can then go out to the side like this or however you want to arrange them for your gift. And I've got all this gorgeous gold gilt watercolor splatters and the white ink splatters on this. And I really love how this looks and how this has come together. I'm just gonna bring in the other tag that I put together off camera and you can see I've used a darker wood pattern and this one I've done with the almond ink. I will put some still shots up of these at the end of the video and I'll have a link to everything that I've used that's current in the description box below. If you've enjoyed this, please give this video a like. It really does help if you are watching this and you hit the like button. And I also want to mention that the creative design team have a membership group which is now open for registration. It's not open all year long. We only open it for a certain amount of time. It's open until the 16th of December. There are two videos a week and one is a full length class with a PDF handout and the other is a tip video with lots of handy tips and the community there is absolutely wonderful. We have a challenge each month as well. So I'd love it if you could join us. There'll be a link for that below. Thank you so much for tuning in to this week's Christmas Tag Tuesday. I hope you'll come back for next weeks when I have a fast, quick, easy tag project to put together. Happy crafting and bye for now.